So welcome to the 10 a.m. session of Big Talk from Small Libraries. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Uh, we are recording the whole day. If you're unable to join us for an, every the whole day, you'll be able to watch recordings um, afterwards. Um, and right now we are going to go out to play, um, <laughs> learn about library playgrounds um, and how you can uh, incorporate those into your library. Uh, Dana Ratliff Warren is here from all right, screen up here, the uh, Trimble County Public Library in Kentucky, Bedford, Kentucky, and their population served. This is actually one of the the I think you are the one with the highest population served we have today. I'm just scanning through. Yes, and it's uh, only a whopping eight thousand eight hundred. Is that still correct? Yes. Yeah. So um, much below our uh, our limit of. Uh, libraries of our presenters being 10,000 FTE or population served. So I'll just hand it over to you to tell us about how we can use library playgrounds at our libraries. Awesome. I just want to thank Krista for putting this together and the ne Nebraska Library Commission and ARSL. Um, these opportunities to share ideas and, and help each other is, is pretty amazing. So thank you for all your hard work. You're welcome. We're happy to, glad to have you and everyone here today. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to um, share some ideas with you today about uh, a playground project we did a, a couple of years ago. Um, just to, to start off, uh, our library is uh, was built in September of 2011. It's a fairly new library, but we've been around for you know 30 plus years. Um, it's a very small community, um, about 8,500 8, um community members that we serve. Um, the the uh, po population, we have two cities in our county, Milton and Bedford. We are in the county seat, which is Bedford. So it's a beautiful community, uh, very warm and welcoming. And our, our library is, I think it reflects our community. It's just a beautiful library and a beautiful space for people to come and use it and enjoy it. So. So we're seeing a lot of different trends with libraries and they're they're creating flexible community spaces. Um, some of the things that we're seeing in Kentucky, you guys might be seeing them in your libraries as well, but we're seeing li um, libraries try to help meet other needs other than education and literacy. So seeing libraries put together food and hygiene product pantries. Um, they're serving as warming and cooling shelters. Um, seeing you know, coffee shops and delis pop up in some of the larger libraries, but also in smaller libraries, maybe coffee corners. Also seeing um, more different partnerships being built with businesses. The Warren County Public Library um, has partnered with a sports and tennis facility, and they've put a small uh, uh, library in their, their facilities with a few books and some computers, and, uh, and that's been a very positive um, partnership for them. Um, some other things that we're doing is um, we have created some digital branches. Um, we put a, a small uh, computer lab and with access to Wi-Fi and some books and things at our Milton City Hall and uh, at the Trimble County Park. We just finished uh, a project putting uh, some computers and some Wi-Fi access at a Tri uh, Action Community Center there, building there at the, the county park. So. We're seeing these libraries really um, meet the challenges of their communities and really being flexible with the services they provide. We're, you know, movement in libraries has also been around for quite a while, I think, because um, we realize that, you know, learning is really important, but our physical bodies are important as well. If, you know, we are healthy, then we're more apt to be open to learning. We understand that our children ages three to five, they need to be active throughout the day. And for those of you who are parents of three to five years old, five year olds, you're gonna be worn out by the end of the day. They are just a lot of fun and very energetic. They need movement. Um, and then, you know, for, for parents who have older children ages six through 17, um, they're not quite as active, but they still need, need quite a bit of activity during the day. And then, I have three teens in my household right now. I, I wish that they would be a lot more active at times, um, especially with cleaning their rooms. But um, 
it's important even throughout our lives. We see that, you know, for adults, we need movement. We need to have uh, intense physical activity and we need to have some strength activity, strengthening act activity as well. So, so these are just some fun things that we've done inside our library to encourage kids to come in and move and play and, you know, hopscotch rugs and little tiles that have um, we call them lava tiles. When you step on them, the composition and color changes. And we also add a lot more um, toys and gadgets that encourage them to particip participate in an imaginative play. Um, we're also seeing, um, you know, with adults, uh, we have yoga classes. We have, you know, some libraries are offering Tai Chi, line dancing. So movement uh, for adults is also a trend in our libraries. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, that that would extend to our outside, outside of our libraries as well. Uh, and playgrounds are very valuable. They provide opportunities for, for kids to practice social, emotional, cognitive, and physical skills. You know, on a playground, if you sit and watch children, you constantly see them making new friends, helping each other sharing, taking turns, and interacting with one another. And we've seen um, a different clientele um, come into the library since we've, we've um, built the playground. Um, and it's inter interesting to see that, you know, families that don't usually come to the library, they're taking um, advantage of our pavilion or our playground, and they come inside for a drink and use the bathroom. And then they see our bulletin boards in the foyer, and oh man, this, you know, the library is doing some really um, cool program, you know, let's let's come and come back and enjoy those. And a lot of times they'll come into the front desk to ask questions, start checking out movies and books and things that, that um, help their families. Another thing that it has provided is that it has helped us to increase space for our programs. Um, so when COVID hit, like mo for most of you, um, you guys were hit with a lot of restrictions, a lot of shutdowns. Our uh, Kentucky was very um, conservative and very um, strict about libraries closing. We had to get very creative. Um, and then when, when we started opening up our, our building uh, for access, we still were very limited to how many people could come in and how many could gather. So having that outdoor library space would have been very, very helpful during COVID. And I wish we had had done this project a lot sooner. Um, but and going forward, we have this amazing outdoor space with a pavilion and the playground that we can integrate into other programming opportunities. So, and please interrupt me if you guys have questions or comments, I'm, I'm free to, to um, I'm flexible with that, so. Yeah, um, yeah, anybody, yeah, whenever you all have questions, you don't have to wait till the end of a presenter session, no. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead and type in whenever you think of something, we don't want you to forget. <laughs> yeah, um, please, and if, please if it's appropriate, I'll jump in. <laughs> please interrupt, Krista, if there's a comment. Um, so, oh, I have a slide out of, out of order, sorry guys. So that was our movement about uh, adults, uh, movement for adults. But, um, so we have, um, we have a pretty open-ended um, library uh, mission and purpose statement. Um, we connect our community with knowledge and experiences, inspiring creativity and discovery. That's pretty, pretty open-ended, I think. Um, another thing is, oh, I just lost my screen there. Sorry, guys. Um, our purpose statement is that we, we try to enrich lives and build community and prepare for an ever-changing future. And those, um, you know, so if somebody ever questions, well, why would you, why would you build a playground? That's not what libraries do, you know. We can, we can go to this mission statement and these purpose statements and say, you know, it's, yeah, we do, because this is, we try to enrich lives and and uh, build community, and a playground does that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with any project that you do, you're going to have to try to gain support for your project. Um, and we took a really hard look at our community and said, you know, do we really need another playground in our community? And um, the answer at that time was yes. Um, we only had two playgrounds that were available to the public access. And both of those uh, playgrounds at the time were in, in disrepair. One was subject to flooding annually. 
um, and the city of Milton had just, just didn't have the resources to keep up with it. And the other one was at a, a county park, which, which had, um, was that a, uh, it has lived its life, let's just say that. It was worn out and it needed to be updated and repaired. So um, that was one of our things we looked at. You know, yes, there is a need, there's a community need for this. Um, we also sur surveyed our community to gauge the interest and acceptance of this project. So there was lots of that. Um, not everybody agreed with us. Um, I think we had a, about 70% of the people that, that took the survey agreed that yes, this would be a good use of library funds. Um, and the rest, you know, they, they questioned some things like, um, you know, I think that it will just be subject to a lot of vandalism. People won't take care of it. And um, yes, that is a valid concern, right? Um, some of our school playgrounds that are open, they get do uh, get vandalized occasionally, and that's a concern for any playground. But our attitude was, you know, why? But why would we um, hold back this resource for 80% of the population, and you know, we have a minority of 5% of the people who are going to come in and misuse the, the land, so in the in the playground, so. But we listened to concerns and we tried to resolve them as best as we could. So we talked to community leaders and the, our partnering organizations to see, you know, what do you think this is a good idea? What do you think about this? And we had a pretty favorable response. And of course, we had every board member um, in favor of this project before moving forward. No, there was nobody in disagreement that this was a project that we shouldn't um, pursue. I am always important. <laughs> yep. So I know that small libraries, budgeting and funding for projects is huge. Um, it's, in a, it's a huge concern. And uh, fortunately, we are well funded. We've been saving money for the project. Um, so that was not an obstacle that we really had to um, overcome. But um, it does, it does uh, it's helpful to look at the numbers. Um, I don't think that you're going to be able to put in a playground that's that's big enough or worth anything it, you know you're going to start out at about forty thousand dollars for the project um and and that was about two years ago so funding and pr our pricing might have changed since then we're seeing a, a price of steel and shipping costs have really drastically uh, increased over the, the past couple of years um and then your high end if you really want a, a decent playground you're going to spend over a hundred thousand dollars um, but there are funder, funding opportunities out there. Uh, there are grants. I didn't have time to look up specific grants, but you can reach out to your uh, local school districts. They have a lot of um, connections that may help um, libraries as well with grants. Um, we have a very supportive um, economic center. We have some businesses and individuals who are very generous. And um, we had quite a few donations to help out with the project as well. And there, you can also look into lowering costs. So um, you might have some a piece of land that might needs might need some leveling or prepared before the project can the playground can be installed. Um, you can reach out to your county highway department to see if they can help out with some of the leveling and the the groundwork that needs to be done. Um, you can also, uh, with installation of the, the playground, you can, you can use volunteers from the community to help install that. And what you would want to ask for then is a, site, a certified project manager from the vendor that will lead the, the project and make sure that it's installed correctly. You can save yourself probably about eight to $10,000 just with having volunteers help out. Um, you can also, with the maintenance and inspections afterwards, you, after you get the playground installed, you can work with your local park authorities or your county officials to see if they can help um, with some of the maintenance costs or some of the inspections. Our big deal was not really the um, the money part for us. It was just finding somebody who could do these small jobs and repair playground if, it, if we needed it to be repaired. So, so we started out with forming a playground committee. We had four staff members who were really interested in working on the project, and all of our board members also provided input. So, and we started, we knew nothing about playgrounds at all. 
Um, so we decided to just start out by researching designs and different services. And we needed to learn more about the requirements for inspections and certifications. Um, there's a manual that's produced by the Consumer Product Safety Commissions. It's called the Public Playground Safety Handbook. It's uh, a little bit outdated. It's from 2015 but it does provide a lot of information, anything that you needed to know, or really, um, it could answer a lot of questions about you, any questions you have about the project. So I would start there uh, first. Um, there are a lot of certifications and or a lot of information about requirements for playgrounds. So that handbook is very helpful. One thing that you wanna look for when you're looking at playgrounds and vendors that you see some of this language that I have on the slide. So you want to make sure that you see ASTM, and that stands for the American Society for Testing Materials. They help set safety and performance standards for equipment and services. Um, so that's important to look for. You're going to also look for, you know, is this vendor part of IPEMA? Um, IPEMA stands for International Playground Equipment Manufacturers Association. It's a professional organization that really prides itself on making sure that um, its members are uh, following these safety guide, guidelines and um, certifications. When you um, have your playground inspected, you wanna make sure that that inspector has a, um, a license. Uh, it's called a CPSI, um, and that's a special license that they, they have to uh, get some training for. So we also looked at, um, the American Disabilities Act compliance and see if we could make our play playground um, uh, have open access to all people with different abilities. Um, and this is not required, but it, it is nice. Uh, it, <clears throat> it makes your project um, a lot more complicated and a lot more expensive. So we were able to do some small things, but not everything that we wanted to do. I need to get a drink real quick. Yeah, that's okay. Because actually, I have a question here that actually relates to this uh, potentially to what you have here about the certifications and and that inspection too. Because uh, I wanted to know how did you deal with liability concerns? That is always what comes up when we talk about this kind of thing in our libraries and outdoor spaces. Is that what this uh, inspecting would? So yeah, the, the inspection it does make sure that the the um, equipment is installed properly. Um, so that is that is a good thing. You want that to happen. Liability is a concern, and that was one of the the things that that you know board members were um, a little bit concerned about taking on this project. Um, and we we reached out to our insurance company, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, and talk, you know, what is our liability? Does this is it going to cost an arm and a leg to insure the insure the playground? And it it increased our insurance cost by about five hundred dollars a year. But that included, you know, the cost of insuring the equipment itself, but also that liability coverage. And honestly, we're required, I think, to cover to to uh, keep one million to two million of liability insurance without the playground. And mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it didn't um, it didn't really affect our insurance. Um, but yes, there's going to be some liability. There always is, you know, whether you're having yoga or you know, you could be just having a, a story walk outside and somebody trips and, and then all of a sudden you're liable for them because they're part of your program. So no, that's a good question. Was there anything else? Uh, not just yet, that will do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the committee had a lot of decisions to make, you know, what kind of materials do we want this to be made out of? What do we want it to look like? There's lots of options, metal, wood, there's recycled plastic lumber. Um, we looked at lots of different surfacing options. Um, you have the lower end costs, which would be wood chips, which is not just wood mulch that you can get from Lowe's. It's actually a, a IPMA certified quality grade. Um, there's the rubber chips, there's rubber tiles, and there's grass turf. Um, all of these are options you'll have to make a decision on. The turf is the most expensive and it's, it can add a lot of money to your project. You're going to look at how, how large of a structure do we have space for? What features does your play system have? Do you want lots of activity panels on it? How many slides do you want? 
those kinds of things. And then there's always the fun extras like the spring riders and the balance beams and stepping stones. You've got spinners and swings. So there's a lot of decisions that go into to, um, designing a playground. Um, and we, so we came up with a wish list. You know, like we were of the mindset of like, okay, we might not be able to afford this, but we're gonna go big. Uh, we're gonna just dream big and this is what we want. We wanted a playground that was fairly large that we could accommodate ages five to 12. Um, we wanted to have at least four slides on the structure. Um, one needed to be a twisty slide and we didn't want the tube slides. We felt like that um, created too many spaces for kids to hide and get into trouble. Um, we wanted at least one, uh, one climbing wall on our structure and other activity panels. We also wanted some swing sets. Um, we wanted a disc swing set and a, a swing for other toddlers. And we also wanted as many extras as we could fit in that space. Um, so we had a pretty healthy budget to work with. So we, we dreamed big on that. So this is what the land looks like uh, before we started the project. Um, and before we could really do anything, we needed to make sure that we had enough space for the, the, play, the system that we wanted. Uh, you can't tell from this picture, but the, the land was, was fairly sloped. Um, so don't let that deter you from, from a project. It does cost money to get level, but it don't, um, if you've got some land and it's kind of you know, not perfectly leveled, um, it can be leveled and it, it takes some work and money, but you'll get there. You see, we had to, um, level this area out. This is behind our property. We have a shed here and this is our back parking lot. Um, we had to put some drainage pipes um, so that it would flow out, out away from the playground. We had to put in two of those. So this is an aerial shot of what the, the ground looked like after we did the excavation work. We did lose use an, uh, a local excavator we decided not to use the, the highway department. Um, we felt like there was just too much work to be done and um, we wanted to make sure that it was done correctly. Um, so we had to put in this rock, kind of a berm area that you uh, shape around the playground. This area, the tip up in uh, this triangle piece up here, that is still fairly sloped. And so any run water runoff comes from that area and then goes around the playground. It's not how we wanted it to look. We wanted everything underground, but it was what we could, um, the excavator um, could do for us. So, and then uh, we had a, this square area over here is a, um, it's in preparation for our pavilion, this, the concrete for the pavilion, so. So once you know your land and you get a size um, of it, how big a play system you can put in, um, you're going to want to start putting those those that wish list in writing, and you're going to want to look at your policies for purchasing. Um, our library had adopted the model for procurement policy from the state of Kentucky, so that required us to do sealed bids for any purchases over thirty thousand, and this definitely was a project that was going to be over over that that amount. So. Um, you need to make sure that you're following your purchase guidelines that is set by your library and your state. That's really important. So when we, um, something that really helped us too is that when we, uh, to get organized for, you know, bid, bid requests, we would put together a document. And in that document, you want to include several things. So the first thing you want to talk about is your scope of project. Um, and you're gonna make a brief statement that something like this, like the project consists of the design, procurement, and installation of a playground system that meets or exceeds all current federal um, guidelines and standards. You wanna use that language right off the bat. Um, you're gonna ask for that manufacturer warranty and you want the, um, the providers to give, make sure they provide liability insurance certificates and references for your, your project. Um, the next um, section in your document that you're, you're gonna prepare, do you wanna put the design guidelines in place system specifications? So this is where you really wanna have your wish list really solid and all of those decisions made. 
um, you know, you're going to indicate you want, you know, this size of a playground, you want, you know, what materials you're going to use, how many features is this play system going to have, how many slides, you know, your activity panels, what do you want those to look like, and uh, include all your extras, your, all of the extra activities that you want in your park. If you're going to have any shades, those are pretty costly, but if you want some shade, you can, you can request quotes for that. We also wanted lots of seating in our playground. Our board was pretty adamant. I'm like, There's never enough benches, right? Every time you go to a playground and it's busy, you can't find a place to sit. So we, we have about eight benches in our park. And we also, for our pavilion, we um, requested quotes for four eight foot picnic tables. So um, the next section of your document, you're gonna uh, talk about assembly and installation and what you, you want from a, a supplier. So you, this is the decision you're gonna have to make. Are you gonna use um, volunteers to help install or you want them to do the labor? This is where you would talk about that. Um, we went with, we wanted a uh, direct supervision from the manufacturer and they wanted, we wanted them to be certified and we wanted them to do all the labor as well. At the time, our uh, community, those two other um, playgrounds that were in disrepair, um, all of our, our resources for volunteers were tied up with fixing those other playgrounds. So everybody had the same idea at the same time. So we felt like it would extend our, our community members too much if we asked them to, to help with this project. So we were fortunate enough to have the money to pay for it to be done. Um, you also want to make sure that after the installation is done, you have an inspection, them to provide an inspection. Um, so make sure that it's, it's properly installed. If they don't have an ins inspector on site, then you can ask for help locating one and, and scheduling one for you. So, And then the last two sections you want to include in that document for requests for bids. You're going to ask for warranty information that you want that not only the information from your for the equipment itself, but any installation warranty that the supplier may provide. Uh, you also, again, it may seem overkill, but you're going to ask for compliance. You know, you want all of your equipment to meet or exceed all federal CPSC, ASTM, and IPMA guidelines. So, and you want to them to actually provide that compliance with documentation. So, how are we doing? Do we have any questions, Krista? Um, let's see here. We do. Um, oh, and you did, you already had mentioned this one thing that I just gonna, was going to just bring it up now since you're talking about doing the quote and what you were setting up for it. Um, doing an outdoor playground, did you, oh, make sure it was adaptive for children with all abilities. You had talked about the ADA earlier. Correct. Yeah, so that we looked into that and uh, we did not have enough uh, land or room to put in the um, like a lot of the ramps instead mm -hmm. of the stairs. Um, so we we didn't we couldn't do that part. We are trying to increase accessibility to, to the playground, though. Right now we're putting in a sidewalk that gradually slopes down and so makes it more accessible to strollers and wheelchairs. So they will at least be able to enter the playground, but it will be difficult to to mm -hmm. um, play on the playground itself which we regret we hate that but um you can only do what you can do right um that ada uh, guidelines it is great if you can can do them but it's not required um especially with the you know small libraries you're probably gonna have our time meeting those standards so sure sure but doing what you can is is you know you do as much as you can yeah absolutely yeah Okay, go ahead. All right, so um, we, uh, our, our policy was that we had to give um, about four weeks for bids to come in um, before we could start evaluating quotes. And we did have to reach out to vendors to get quotes because this is kind of a specialized field, right? You know, you, most, there's not a lot of playground companies around looking at paper, paper local papers to find bids and jobs. So we did reach out to several. And we had a one surprise vendor that put in a quote that we were pretty impressed with. So 
once you get those quotes, you're gonna um, you're gonna look at it really closely, and you know, did they meet all your your needs and your specifications? We had one quote that was so poorly done that we're like, oh, you know, if they're gonna not do the work on the front end, you know, what is the final product going to be? And mm -hmm. we, just from their work quote, we just decided not to um, work with that company. So price is always a big deal. You're gonna look at, you know, did they come in and how how much is it going to cost us? We compared warranty information. Not all warranties are the same or created equal. So make sure that you're really understanding that. And certification was a big deal for us. We want to make sure that we're complying with all guide safety guidelines. So we also looked at the quality of the product and the longev longevity of it. Um, that was important for us. We didn't want to have a lot of maintenance. We didn't want to have to make a lot of repairs. Um, we were concerned a little bit with metal playgrounds that they tend to rust and the joints tend to come loose um, frequently. So that mm -hmm. was a big thing for us. And of course, aesthetics, you want it to look great. Like right? you want you know kids to be attracted to your playground and want to come play. So those were things that we, we looked at. We ended up um, going with a vendor named Playtopia and we love that they were in Kentucky. Um, they specialize in recycled plastic playgrounds, and this is the, the system that they quoted for us. Um, there's a different angle. It, it had a, a lot of fun uh, activity panels. We love the shades on the top. It had, it, it doesn't show it here on this one, but we added some slides to it, uh, a twisty slide, and um, it met all of our, our requirements that we that we wanted so and aesthetically the board really liked that the wood look kind of went with the front of our library it kind of extended that aesthetic um, quality that we wanted to keep as well so you're going to order your playground and during the pandemic um, it took us six months to get that built so i don't know what the timeline is right now on playgrounds where they're at with that but you're going to have quite a bit of weight it, they just don't keep those things in stock so um, we had six months to just kind of anticipate the project. But while we were waiting, we, we got our playground rules together. We talked about, you know, what do we want our, you know, the types of behaviors we want to see on the playground and age groups that we want to serve. You know, is it going to be open to the public all the time or is it just going to be open during the library hours? That's a decision that you and your library, your board members can make. Uh, definitely want to state that you you want supervision of children under a certain age. Uh, definitely address tobacco, tobacco, alcohol, and drug use. Um, if there's any other activities you don't want on your playground, such as dogs, skateboards, uh, bicycles, um, I think that helps to make those statements um, to encourage people to you know use the playground safely at their own risk. So. Um, okay. Someone actually has a question that just popped up here that you might get into. How do you enforce these rules? Like I was actually wondering about the whole hours that it's open. Is it fenced in some way or is it? So our actual, we originally thought, you know, we'll just have it open during library hours um, and we'll lock the gates to the playground afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to make sure that it was open on the weekends, you know, when we weren't open, because we do want this to be part of the community. and. Um, and we just thought, well, we'll leave it open and we'll watch if we have any, um, you know, misbehavior, we have any um, vandalism, then we'll start locking things up. And so far we haven't had that happen. Um, as far as, um, you know, how do you, you can't, there, you know, there isn't any public playground that you can, um, keep all of the make sure everybody's complying to all these rules there is unless you put somebody on duty there to sit there and watch the entire time yeah right. there's no way but you do post these rules and you do due diligence right and so that you know if you are ever in a lawsuit or anything like these are these are rules that are posted you mm -hmm. know this is what they're asked to do they weren't in compliance with those those rules um so we also um have security cameras up in that area. I was gonna ask so, about that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if there's any an, an injury or a report of improper use, we can um, bring that up and 
that footage up and look and you know if like any other library services if somebody's abusing the, the you know the library or ha they have inappropriate behavior then ask them you know you're not, you're not able to use this this uh, service so yeah i mean that is a liability and you uh, you know not everybody's comfortable with that uh, that risk so you definitely have to be all on board with that for sure mm -hmm. is there any Great. others um I think we'll come back to this one question that did just come up here because I'm uh someone wants to know uh so oh so so you said that you did leave it open. Do you still have this sign that says only open during library hours or did you change that? We didn't. Um <laughs> we didn't change it. Um we figured that um if we ever did have to lock it up, the, the sign's there. So yeah. but otherwise yeah. it's open and people can come in and yeah. Yep. Um, but so let's know how did you learn or know about all of the necessary certifications that you needed that, that all of that you sound very knowledgeable in this area how did you like i mean it's not like you said this isn't something that libraries and library directors would necessarily do right um well it was we did a lot of research online but we also one of the vendors that we talked with um was very good about educating us um nice. and, you know whatever vendor you choose you do choose you do you want to make sure that these are the things that you're seeing these certifications are on their their quotes um because these are important um yeah. so that was very helpful right there awesome. so, all right go ahead all right um I'm trying to think here where we left off i think we covered everything here um and also another thing why you can do while you're wait um are you going to want a fence for that property if so you know start talking about fences what kind and how high do you want it and what's the purpose it's going to serve you want to keep people out or in or what kind of you know materials you need to use and color and that's a whole another topic right there right you know how to how to build a fence for your library right playground um you can also again talk to your insurance company get them prepared for the project let them know you know this is the quote we received this is the projected cost um and make sure that you know you have those documents right right uh prepared so that when you do get you the, the project is finally um done your insurance is ready to go it's just it's, it's going so um and then the, the day the big day comes you know you've been preparing for this for months and really getting excited about it and that big day comes you get the call from the vendor and they're ready to install um that's a fun day and you want to make sure that you can be present for your installations um and i know that that is sometimes hard because contractors don't always show up when they're supposed to we've had that we had that happen a couple times where they got pulled into different projects or it ended up raining and you know and then trying to schedule around staff va vacations that was it was kind of hectic um but you want to when you're when you start installing you want to make sure that you're reviewing those specifications with your installers because they're not in the pro in on the project from day one they basically are helping get the, your equipment transported to your site and they get basically a map you know this is what it's going to look like so they don't they're not privy to those conversations that you're having with salespeople. so it's really important that you you know you're there and you can talk about um, placement of the library playground is it going to be positioned correctly on the land that you have where it's where is it going to be facing um we ran into an issue where um they positioned the the playground too close to the pavilion area which caused some issues with our fence gates opening we had to actually change the direction of our fence gates um how they opened because the play playground was fish, uh, positioned too closely to a, a a little slope that we have on our playground so those are th some things that i wish i would have done um looking back so definitely try to be there if you can um and then after your installation um make sure that again like make sure that you have that inspection done and they provide you with the, the paperwork um because i could see you know installers getting in a hurry to finish up the 
the job and then not providing that and just leaving. And make sure that you keep all those certifications on file for your insurance company, just for, for your reference. And then ask for the warranty, um, not only for the equipment itself, but for any installation that um, warranty information that they offered, That's it's good to have that on, on um, hand. And then you're gonna call your insurance company and said you're you're ready to go and insert that insurance right away. So, um, so I guess we're you know this is our completed project. Uh, this is our pavilion. We went with a, just a metal building. Um, it cost around eighteen thousand um, dollars. The wood a wood structure we would have loved to have, but it was ten thousand dollars more. Um, so this is the um, back when it was first. Uh, finished the grass didn't have time to get um, to grow up so it's a little ratty looking there but um, this is the final um, what it looks like uh, you notice we did we did put in a black um, fence that was more ornamental than anything but our board was really wanting to keep um, kids from you know just running into the that rock area and down the hill and they wanted to make sure that they were safe as possible um, this is just a this last fall, this is the another side view of it. Um, you can notice our the the structure has quite a few play uh, panels that are you know invite kids to play and um, climb and it was a little, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun things to do. We did um, include some shades and a lot of seating area for our parents and our grandparents who bring their Kiss the park. We included some little spring riders that are a lot of fun. They really enjoy those. The kids do. Um, these two pieces I probably wouldn't do again. I wouldn't recommend. The balance beam for the money and the cost is not really big enough. Um, mm -hmm. And the little sit spinner is it's really not that big either. But it's funny the amount of adults that want to sit their hind end in that little spinner and and spin um, they still manage to do it so um but so i wouldn't i probably wouldn't have i would have gone with different activities than these two probably and then we did get our disc swing disc swing um installed we didn't have enough room to have a second swing bay there and um so but this is a really popular item the kids really love this so so you can see we also chose to do the wood mulch um, and we originally wanted the rubber mulch um, and our the Playtopia, our vendor who supplied this system to us, they talked us into it and they said that, number one, the kids will throw the rubber mulch and they do. You'll oh. be completely clean up. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, they will not. They, they won't throw the wood chips as much as they do the rubber. And we haven't. We haven't had any problem with the kids throwing it outside of the play area. Um, they said that it, you know, you have to replace wood um, wood and rubber mulch at the same rate. Um, so there's not a huge cost saving there. And um, it was just more environmentally, environmentally friendly. So they also suggested we put, I don't know if you can see the black mats underneath the um, disc queen there. Those, you know how, it, um, um, playgrounds mm -hmm. like there's area of use that gets really just kind of pitted and um, these black mats are supposed to help keep the mulch in place so you're not getting the getting those divots in your land uh, by the slides and everything so so here's the the breakdown of the, all of the costs on our project um, excavation was about 10,000 playground was a hundred thousand that was more than we wanted to spend but with the um, cost of everything rising we didn't really have a choice in that um, and we really didn't want to back down on the project and not install everything that we wanted because we knew that it was a lot of work and we just wanted to get it done all at once um, our pavilion like i said was about 18 to 20. Uh, the fence that we put in was eight thousand um, and our sidewalk is going to cost about four grand so it's about a hundred and forty two thousand dollar project so it's not cheap at all for sure um and it took us about two years to do it um with from the time of planning to you know purchasing and get it installed it's it's not a, a very quick project i was thinking it would take six to nine months 
Mm. Nope. <laughs> so, and then once you get your project done, you want to party because it, it's a big deal. It's, it's a lot of work, a lot of fun. I learned a lot, but a lot of work. Um, and we had an open house um, and we invited our board members. We had, um, you know, city mayors there, the fiscal court judge, magistrates. We um, had invited, you know, special families that to make sure we had kids there for photos. We were afraid that people wouldn't show up for it. Right afterwards, we had our open, our summer reading open house as well. So that kind of helped as well to get people there. Um, and it, we just had a lot of fun. One thing that we did do is we created a plaque that um, thanked all of the board members who, are, who were involved in the project. Because it took so long, we had some board members that um, moved off the board. We also, we lost a board member, unfortunately, during the process to COVID. And it was kind of just a great way to honor them and him um, for the work that he, that he did on the project as well. So, but, that was it. That is the end of my presentation. Um, if you guys have any more questions, I'll be happy to stick around. Uh, yeah. And yeah, we definitely do. Yeah. So go ahead and leave that slide up there um, while we go through the questions we have here. Um, sure. Yeah, thank you so much. This, this was awesome. Um, Another great presentation, of course, you know, seeing this being done and through the, from the library's point of view, I know there's been playgrounds near libraries, but not necessarily done by the library, just maybe coincidence <laughs> of where it is. Um, so yes, we do have some questions that came in. If anyone does have any other questions, go ahead and, and uh, get them entered, type into the question section, and I'll uh, grab them from here. Um, so one big question, I think I'll start with this one, like, how did you find the time to do all of this, you, all the prep work you're talking about and everything that needed to be done? And how much help did you have with the research legwork um, and everything? Um, this person says they have most of their work, they do it it's themselves, the minimal help from board members. So, you know, curious how you were able to do this. Did your board help with some of the or other staff? Um, I had I had um, four other staff members help with the research okay. work yeah so yes but it it is a lot of work um as a director um it's almost like you're you're um, doing a building project or a renovation project and i've done both so it is extra work and so you know you're having to do all of your you know bill paying and all your report writing and managing su supervising employees um so yes um i would say we had had a very supportive board member, Dudley Lush. He um, helps out a lot with building projects and he has a background in history in that. So mm -hmm. he was a great resource to bounce ideas off and help make decisions as far as, especially with the excavation part of the process. He had a real um, handle on what needed to be done. So yeah, our board, um, although you know we did bring a lot of the ideas to our board, the board was very instrumental in making final decisions, which was helpful, you know, so. Great, okay. And you mentioned grants. Did you apply for grants for this particular project? We did not. Um, we, we thought about it and um, we felt like um, we had enough saved to do the project mm -hmm. and um, could justify the expenditure, you know, with how frugal we had been through the years. Um, we also felt like if we had applied for grant, it would have set the project back uh, a year or two because you know grant processes are pretty timely. So, true, true. so we did not. Uh, okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, in oh here's a good question in what ways did you survey your community you said you reached out to see what the community how did you do the that uh gather that information so we surveyed our um internally in the library we had a um just a laptop at the front desk where we invited people to fill out um a survey on what types of um things uh, new you know how we'd use the space, what kinds of um, projects that they would be interested in. And the, the playground was on that list of, hey, you know, would you would you be interested in the library building a playground? 
Um, we also reached out, we did a survey online um, through social media and um, advertised that link for the survey. And we tried to encourage people to fill out the survey by offering a gift card, you know, like a, a drawing for those, you know, if you were fill out the survey, you're entered into a drawing for a $25 gift card. <laughs> So yeah, getting feedback from the public outside of the library is sometimes hard and challenging. Um, I think one thing that I really try to do though is I try to be part of other community groups like Rotary, um, Trimble Cares, other organizations where I'm with other leaders quite a bit. So I have these just natural opportunities that come up to have these conversations. Um, so that that's helpful as well. So. Always be doing your elevator pitch everywhere you go <laughs> yep. for the I'm better with the library. Yeah. Um, someone does want to know if you could go back and show the pictures of the playground and its finish, finish stage again. Just sure. want to see what that looks again. Yeah. So there's our disc swing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going too fast. This is just a little um, spinner, sit spinner and a balance beam. Not my favorite, but <laughs> you live in there, right? Yeah. Um, spring riders. These are a lot of fun. The kids like that. Yes. Some adults like them as well, but should not. <laughs> um, we have the um, this is yeah. a sitting area. We have six other benches um, in the around the parameter as well. So in the shades, you do not have to remove them during the wind. We haven't had any problems with it. They're pretty sturdy. I was concerned about that, but. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are under warranty and also covered by insurance if they ever do get damaged. So these are some of the activity panels. Um, we, there's quite a few other activ activity panels like the produce stand. There's one panel, it's, I don't have a picture of it, where you know one child stands on one end and can yell and talk through the, the tube and another oh, yeah. person on the other side can hear them. And then here's a, another yeah, view. That's nice. Yeah, picture of everything together. Nice. Yeah. All right. So while we have this one, someone did was uh, questioning about that. You talked about the liability and the sign and the fencing and everything. Um, and you mentioned that you fish. You the sign says only open during library hours. Um, but you decided to leave it quote unquote open anytime just to be more open to the community and we'll see how it goes. And she wanted to know if that would have any issues with liability. Um, you have a sign that says only open to library hours, but you leave the gate open. Um, looking at this fence, they could just climb over it anyways. So I, I wonder if that's even, you've got the insurance and if someone comes in there and something happens, it, you know, you've got that insurance coverage, correct? I mean, yes, we do. Sign says, and then somebody climbing over the fence or walking through the gate at an off hour that's what the insurance is for <laughs> so you know that um manual that i talked uh, about the, uh, the uh, federal agency that produced yeah. they, they um cover a lot of you know the safety and liability and issues that would be a good resource for you to, to answer a lot of your questions because i'm not an expert and i really don't want to tell you something that's not that's not accurate um you know we we understood um that the the fence our purpose for the fence was to keep littles in. We didn't want to keep, sure. you know, if we, wanted, off. Yeah, yeah. if we wanted to keep everybody out, we would have built an eight to 10 foot fence, you know, and the cost of the project would have been, you know, twice as much. And, and so, you know, the board just decided that, yeah, it's, this is what we want. You know, we just need to keep people, um, our littles in so that they're safe. You know, if somebody really wants to get in there, like you said, they're going to get in there. They're going to climb. Yeah, yeah. We have a reading guard that has a, a 10 to 12 foot brick wall, and you know, kids still are able to climb over that wall and get in the reading guard in after hours. You well, know, yeah. so it's you do what you can on your part and um, make sure that your your insurance is well is good. Um, and honestly, that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. um, counties or you know county parks they have the same liability with their parks many of them them aren't fenced many right. of them closed off so yeah. absolutely um 
We're going to have to, I think, do those last few uh, questions here so we can get into our next session. But there's one I did want to ask about um, that someone is, um, so if anyone does want to reach out to Dana, you can reach out to her at her library if you have other questions, anything you want to discuss with her about it. Um, actually, one thing here did say they wonder if you had any problems with Parks and Rec. You said your Parks and Rec department worked with you on this, correct? They were supportive of it? Honestly, um, no, I made that suggestion. Like, you could work with your Parks and Rec. Um, okay. and did I know, you uh, have anything to say about you, the library, doing this then? Or well, at the time, the the Park and Rec Board wasn't established. Um, they were okay. well, they they were trying to get members to to you know get the committee going again. So no, they did not have any any input on there. But I do know another library who had um, in the count or in the, in the state of Kentucky who kind of had that situation where um, the Park and Recs built a, a playground right next to their property. And they worked together to maintain that. And they actually, the library pays to maintain it. And then the, the Park and Rec um, committee, they provide the light, you know, the person to, to actually do the labor, mm. that kind of thing. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Definitely work together if you have one. Um, so let's do this last question. Um, do you ever use the, the playground for potential library activities, like doing story hour there? Um, summer reading, um, anything like that, or do you, does the library use it for any kind of programming related? We do. So <clears throat> we have that pavilion area. We have uh, programs out there, and it's great. It's just like a natural progression from, okay, I'm done with my arts and crafts, and while you're waiting for something to dry, you know, they go out and play. <laughs> Um, you know, there's so many fun things you can do out on the playground. You can use it as like a Nerf war area you already have obstacles and things our kids have to you know hide behind and jump behind um mm -hmm. definitely you can do a lot of like um games with like tag um you know all the fun stuff that we did in the 80s you freeze tag and um all these you know steal the flag and all these fun little things definitely um you can use that area and what's great it's fenced right so you're not going to lose anybody down you know in the road or in the parking lot exactly yeah yeah we have <clears throat> we have a, a a pretty large um homeschool group that comes and we host some of their their events and you know it's just kind of a natural progression too they come and they play video games inside and socialize and do some library activities inside and then on the great few days when it's nice they you know it's just an extension of the library and they go out and they play before they go home so you have kids that are <clears throat> families that are there for like two hours just playing and, and taking care you know advantage of services so mm -hmm. it's been really it's really been great awesome all right thank you so much Nina. thank you for the presentation yeah uh, this is great uh, and other people saying, yeah, congratulations to you, uh, your community. This is um, a great service for them all. Thank all you. right. So um, thank you so much.